Hello, and welcome to the Ink Spot, the show where we talk about books. I'm your host, Stanley G. Robertson. Today on the show, we are going to be discussing the book entitled Medical Apartheid. The book is written by Harriet A. Washington. Today, I'm joined on the show by my guest, Gavin Jackson. Gavin, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Benita Jackson, no relation. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. And Tony Hess, welcome to the program. Thank you. Gavin, what do you think of medical apartheid? You know, of all the books we've done on this show, I find this book to be the most compelling, informative, and most disturbing book we've ever read. Ever read. Benita. I agree. It's actually the most difficult, and it's the saddest book I've ever read before. Tony. The context was, was terrible, but the education was great. Yeah, I thought Medical Apartheid was an excellent book. I believe that the context of the book, as you mentioned, was such that it might actually make you fearful of the medical profession. I think that the book was extraordinarily well conceived and well done. I, I thought that she would have a problem presenting medical information the way that she did, but she was able to somehow put the information together where it was very easy to read. I did find it difficult to get through the book just because of the amount of words on the page. Uh, however, the context of the material, the, the information flowed extremely smooth, which right. was very surprising to me in a book of this nature. When she started off with the, I thought about medical, so I thought it was going to be a whole bunch of medical jargon where mm -hmm. I'm just not going to understand anything, but she really brought it home. She put actual examples in there. She put faces to each situation. Right. Yeah, and, that's true. And one, one of the faces yeah. that really stood out to me, right at the beginning of the book, she talked about this particular physician who happened to be a gynecologist named Dr. Marion Sims. And that guy seemed to be atrocious in, in his, uh, his, his works. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, what stood out to me about him is he used to use uh, blacksmith tools on people, you know. On women in particular. On women, yeah, in particular. And uh, he was developing an instrument. He, he had his colleagues come around from the country saying, I could open up a woman so wide that you could just literally see through her. You know, this this guy was barbaric. I mean, yeah, he was extremely he was, barbaric. He was and, barbaric, and the 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 tools that he was using, he was actually trying to create uh, instruments to operate on women in particular, as we we right. mentioned. And he was a gynecologist, so he was he was using these crude instruments, if you even can call them instruments. And I, I think you said it best. Probably the best way to describe them is. Um, blacksmith tools yeah and he was using these instruments to operate on these women who were uh, of course black women maybe he's been heralded as a hero and yes he may have made a few medical breakthroughs before the tor the torture that these women went through for him to to bring about these breakthroughs is just horrendous and she painted a really good picture you said that that he was painted as a hero she painted an excellent picture of how that all came about at the beginning of the book where she said that there was this portrait and she wanted to use the portrait for the cover. The cover ends up uh, being read with this black cross on the front. But she said she originally wanted to use this portrait. And it, it's a portrait that's in a particular collection. It's in one of the medical, uh, the pharmaceutical company's right. collections. I forget which company it is. But in any case, that she asked them for permission to use this portrait for the cover of the book. And they said no. Uh, they said, let me see the content of the book. Let us see some samples of the first chapter and the outline of the book. She showed them that, and they declined to let her use the portrait. So she described it. And in her description, she said that sh she showed this pristine setting where Mer Dr. Sims was sitting there, the slave girl on the table, and then they had these two assistants with their white lab coats all clean. And she said that was a serious misnomer because in reality, it was blood soaked, the, 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 the scene would have been chaotic. And in fact, these guys, the doctors, uh, the assistants at some point, they would hold the woman down so that he can operate because the pain was so excru excruciating. Yeah. Right, I mean, the, the, whole, the reason they didn't let her use the picture was because the whole book is about how medicine has advanced in America on the backs of torturing black people and experimenting exactly. on exactly. black people. And you know, he's a hero, Dr. Sims, he has this huge statue in Central Park, you know, this huge, not even, not a bust, a statue of him as, this is the father of modern gynecology. Mm -hmm. But you know, as you mentioned, they don't talk about 
his assistants holding down slaves with two hands as he just slices and dices right. through them. And, and no while he was holding killer, them down, no nothing. Right. True, no pain killer. Right. And while he was holding them down, she said that at one point the assistants, the, the pain was so unbearable in these women that the assistants had to actually run out of the room. Yes, yes. And then the other slave women had to hold the woman down so that because so they knew it would be worse. If, so if everyone she, was being tortured all the right. way around. But like you said, the slave women, they had to. They didn't have no other choice, you know what I mean, to, to hold the woman down while, while he, he butchered her, literally butchered her. Right. And, and it's one, an analogy she made in the book. She said that you might think of this Marion Jones and these other um, physicians who were experimenting on black folk. You might tend to think of them as the Dr. Frankenstein stereotype. You think that's a, a valid uh, analogy? I mean, in that, you know, they're, they're experimenting on people. I mean, a lot of other doctors that they mentioned in here, they were by slaves. You know, like, you know, supposedly Frankenstein would, you know, buy, give me this dead body yeah, so I can yeah. do my creation. These people would say, hey, let's put this advertisement up. I need 50 slaves. If you don't need them, they're sick, they're not working well. Bring them to me. I'll take, right. you know, I'll take, take care of them. Yeah. 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 But the take care of them is I'm going to experiment on them. If they get well, you as the slave owner, you win, because now you've got a well slave that can get right. back in the field. If not, you know, it's no loss to you anyway. So slaves were basically the modern day, well, they were back then, the lab rats. So right now they, they perform different experiments on, on mice. and mm -hmm. They didn't even consider us humans, but right. they were just using human beings to basically fix their own people. They, they right. just kind of used was, us as experiments. There, there, was, there was a quote from, from someone, and this is a more modern quote, uh, in New Orleans where he was saying, you know, we would like to use cats, right? Exactly. but Negroes are, are more Easy plentiful to get. and cheaper to get. They could grab them off the street right. and do what they right. will with them. But it's ironic because they considered us to be subhuman. We was of another species. That's how they looked at us, like you said, but they justified that morally. But they looked at us as a different total human being, but yet they wanted to torture us and experiment on us to heal them. Well, one of the reasons why they used, they experimented on blacks is they actually wanted to prove their theory that blacks were subhuman. Blacks were actually another species. Right. Even though somebody would be screaming on the table at the top of their lungs, they said they can take pain right. better. They, right. They're right. really not in pain. Right. This, these things went on with no anesthesia. We have a hangnail now and we go off. So could you imagine they're literally cutting into somebody without any and, and uh, Dr. Henry Louis Gates actually pointed on that because now the, the situation we're talking about with Marion Jones and some of these others happened in, during the slavery times, but there are instances that have come all the way up through, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, throughout history up until current to present day. But um, Dr. Uh, Henry Louis Gates made this comment. He said that when he, he, he's at Harvard, and he said that when he was in school, he went to a he went to Africa for one year to work on an internship. While he was in Africa, he said that he saw the doctors doing the same thing. So now Henry Louis Gates, I mean, he's already maybe a little, a little bit uh, over a few years older right. mm -hmm. than me or some of some of us. And so this is not we're not talking 100 years ago. We're talking about 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, in any case, he went to Africa to work, and he said that he saw the doctors working on these blacks, and they had this exact same attitude that these doctors back in the antebellum time had, that blacks didn't experience pain the same as white people experienced pain. And in fact, he said that, Henry Louis Gates said that he heard the doctors say, as they were operating on these people in Africa, and they were screaming and yelling, the doctors 